Oh shit. Okay. So, since we did not do it last time, oh. uh, we do have to talk about swords Yay. for at least a portion of this episode. For a portion, you mean the entire? Uh. This is more of a topic for you because I don't. Well, I mean, I owned like kunais and shit at one point. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So like, no. that's actually a good fucking segue. Um. Sadly, never owned kunais yet. Oh, okay. Um, but cool. my friends had got some, one of my friends had got some, um, legitimate ones oh. and I was pissed off because he had got them in little Tokyo and that's what he told me. And the first time that we all went, um, we couldn't find any. And at least once a year I go solely for the purpose of looking for kunai okay. and never find them. And it wasn't until... Last year, and when he told me that story, it was maybe six years ago, all right? It wasn't until last year that he's like, oh, yeah, they closed that store down. And I was like, I spent the last six fucking years looking for a shop that doesn't exist. <laughs> I was pissed. But. Hashtag waste his time. <laughs> they waste his time 2020. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my fucking God. So, but we have a friend um, who goes, I, I don't know if he want us to use his real name, but uh, we have a friend who goes by Talisneth. Talisneth is uh, half Japanese, half Korean. Okay. And where does it this was, man live? Um, he, he lived in, like, not too far from where we went to school together. Okay. Uh, really cool. And we went to go visit him for the very first, well, not homeboys, I went to go visit him with uh, two mutual friends for the very first time. Oh, sure. And we got to, like, finally meet his family, and his his mom and sister were incredibly, incredibly nice. Uh, his dad was mildly racist, but it made it all the funnier. And mildly? Mildly, yeah. Mm. It was, I mean, like, he didn't, like, say anything racist. It was just that his dad worked at a bar down the street, and unfortunately, the people who would fuck up his bar every night were black people. Aww. And as an immigrant, that was his only exposure his whole life to black people. So he has a, a bias, which I understand. I get yeah. yeah, I don't. I, I, I mean, didn't that like. That can happen to anybody. Though. Yeah. In any country, yeah. If you put them, like, yeah. Like even in Russia, you can still do that too. Right. So I didn't like when my friend warned me about that ahead of time. And he's like, yeah, so, like, if he seems just a little serious or strict, like, it's not that you're doing anything wrong, and, you know, just don't hold anything against him. I'm like, yeah, thanks for, thanks for letting me know. Thanks for giving me that perspective. Not walking in a fucking gunfire without... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Knowing. And even then, like, he just really, like, kept to himself. He, like, he was just kind of serious the whole time, but he never, he didn't do anything, like, towards me or anything like that. But anyways, um, randomly, because uh, I got to, I got to meet his older brother officially for the first time because his brother also went to the school but uh, graduated by the, like, after a year of us knowing each other and whatnot. Oh, sure. um, so with that three, four year difference, I never, like, really met him. Oh, we yeah. just kind of bumped into each other. He's like, hey, you're Eric. Cool. <laughs> Which wasn't weird to me because that's how everybody knows me. Just... Uh, it, I'm... For six years... No. Like, eight years straight... Of school was just people bumping into me and knowing me by name hey, right. and me never <laughs> seeing their faces before. At that point, I'd be like, who the fuck is carrying a picture of me around? For like, fucking yeah. real, yeah. Because And <laughs> and fuck? you know someone had to be carrying a picture of me because... Because know you from Vegas. No, no. Because I moved 300 miles away to Santa fucking Cruz and oh. people still know me by name and face. Yeah, someone's definitely <laughs> He's like, my sole mission is to make sure this man's well known. Nobody <laughs> from my high school went to Santa Cruz with me. Shit, I should have fucking, like, when you first worked here, I should have been like, oh shit, you're close, That would be, huh? yeah, if you ever get a time machine, do that, please. For I will yeah. be pissed off. <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I, I get to meet Talis Ness' older <laughs> brother, and he's like, hey, you want to see something cool? I was like, yeah, sure, man. So we go to, um, they, they both share a bedroom. And he shows me this little wooden box, and okay. uh, he shows his uh, his personal kunai and shuriken collection, and they were all authentic because he got them imported. Oh fuck! Um, and so I he even showed me. He's like, look, the, these are like more weighted. These are just a little lighter. I look at the design on these. He had one with this very skillfully carved dragon down to the fucking scale, no laser. Wow. Yeah, it was insane. Shit. And must have cost him a fortune. Um, 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he bought it through like an online store that does international, or if he converted money to yen and then and just then did went on the Japanese portion of Google. Yeah, um, but so he had a little collection, and then this motherfucker. First time I'm meeting his goddamn brother, he was like, "Hey, so told me the um, about like." how like you're always working out and shit and how you like always wanted to to like own weaponry and stuff but like your financial situation so here's three of my shuriken and i was like dude i don't even know your name and i fucking love you <laughs> and um so i had shuriken and a very strict mother so oh, i had to constantly keep them my bag had i had like um those shoulder bags type okay. of things with those one straps and okay. it had this this tiny little little pocket on it where I would keep just random shit okay. um so I emptied that pocket out so I can only keep my shuriken there and I started calling it my fucking shuriken pocket <laughs> I had a secondary shuriken pocket for when shit was gonna get real that was on the strap on my chest so I can just flick that open and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. Yeah, um, the and one of my friends, um, well, named Samantha, she she saw them because I was like, I, I was trying to sharpen them in Spanish class against the metal legs of the tables. Okay. And I'm just like, fuck, I gotta, I gotta, I'm like trying to rub them thinking the friction will like get them sharp or whatever yeah. the hell. And she's like, no, 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 I got you. I have a knife sharpener at home. And I was like, why do you have a knife sharpener? She's like, I have a knife collection. And I was like, you're so fucking lucky you're taken. I would fuck you right now. <laughs> this girl has a knife collection and she, and like, she's an emo in 2014. Should, Hell yeah. You should have just fucked her right there. <laughs> you should have been like, I know you, I know you take him, but <laughs> right oh now. my god about. no she was dating a friend of ours so whatever but so That's she she it. takes she takes my shuriken to sharpen them we go on like not like, like winter break right mm -hmm. um and i come back to school first day of the new semester super excited and she's like hey i got something to tell you i'm like oh fuck and she says so i lost them um, um but i know where they're at where they're at i'm like okay well where are they at my aunt's house Oh, cool. Do you visit like one, like every month or like every two months? And she's like, um, rarely. My, my, my aunt lives in San Francisco. I went back home for the first time since I left and I left an entire bag of luggage there and your shuriken were in my luggage. And I was like, why the fuck did you take my shuriken yeah. on vacation with you? And she's like, I forgot to sharpen them. So I was like, I'll sharpen them on vacation. And I did. And they're sharp. But then I left my whole bag of luggage. So at least you're not the only one who's fucked. <laughs> and so I did not, I, I got to practice them once in, in the patio. I have to show you photos of, of my patio. Uh, it has these really nice tall trees. And when I was a kid, I was, I was like, yeah, man. When I like, when I own a sword and kunai one day, I'm going to practice on these trees. And that's what I did. I got my shuriken and I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, that almost hit a window. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so unfortunately, that that was my shuriken story, and to this day they're missing because she never went back to that aunt. Um, well, and when she and after that, when she went back to San Francisco, she couldn't take them. Oh, she remembered, and this was even after she graduated. She remembered, but she was never able to take them back with her because every time since that day that she went back to San Fran, she went by plane. So she wasn't able to bring them back anyhow. Because um, the very first time when she took the shuriken with her, she went by a bus. Mm. That's how she was able to, like, smuggle them on. So, very unfortunate. Oh, she just took in a bus again. She, yeah, no, but she never... Because they were family trips, you know? It's not like she was just going by herself. So yes. her, her, her pops would roll up, and, and he's like, Hey, guess what? Plane tickets. Uh, when are you off? Mm. Yeah. Um, but swords... Wait, why not just mail them? Uh, I don't know. Why not just be like, from my aunt's house, put them in a fucking mailbox and then be like... I don't think she thought about that. To my credit, or to her credit, I didn't think about it either. But <laughs> That's a lot of it, I'm the, the, saying, like, I would have been yeah. like, fuck it, dude, mail that shit. Yeah, like. for real, for real. But eight years too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now. Now. So I am trying... 
to because money's been tight for the last two months but i've been trying to get some swords and i'm like i'm a little hesitant about learning shit online mm-hmm. just because like i don't know how authentic some information is or if these people are like yes this is legit i was taught by this person taught by this person and whoever started that chain was like taught wrong or whatever the mm-hmm. hell you know so i would prefer to go to like a shop if I could fucking find one somewhere in LA because like there's because the only sword shop that I found so far there's one right next door in North Hollywood um, which I don't trust for professional advice just because they sell those rainbow colored swords and I'm like okay man um, but then there's also one in like Chinatown and I'm also hesitant about that because it's Chinatown yeah Chinatown <laughs> Chinatown Whichever way you want to look at it, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's Chinatown. It's Chinatown. You tell anybody, like, oh, yeah, let's go to Chinatown. They're usually hesitant. Yeah, I go, a, not, well, not a lot, but I, I had a little phase of going a lot because of uh, a, lit, a, a friend that I that I went with to look for a case for his new iPhone 11. And because he, which surprisingly, they fucking had. Wait, to find his iPhone 11? No, 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 a case. Oh. I was like, how the fuck are you going to... Wait, you just go to Detective Eric going, all right, fuck, we looking for an hey, iPhone dog, 7 Hey, dog, hey, I want you to I want you to know, I watched three playthroughs on Detective Pikachu shut for the, the 3DS, up. and I watched the it movie. So matter. shut the fuck up, Logan. <laughs> what are you going to do? Go fight Mewtwo next? <laughs> yes, Logan. Actually, if I pull up my emulator here, and I pull up my Fire Red, that's where I'm at right now. So it's on everyone. This isn't a podcast. This was all leading up to a fucking... <laughs> this is actually advertising the new series on the Homeboys channel. <laughs> Coming February 1st. Uh, nah, but actually the game I'm playing right now is going to come to the channel soon, but that's going to be after the, after Emerald is done. Um, okay. but fucking, yeah, man, I, I, I want to, I want to own three swords though, just for the sake of like following in the footsteps of Master Zoro. <laughs> Wielding three swords at once. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm going to get them. I, I'm just debating if I want to go out and find three swords that I like the best. Or if I want to take the time and the money to have custom made his three swords post time skip, okay. to have the one black blade yeah. and to have which was his Shisui I, I believe, yeah. Well, the original ones fucking broke, oh, really? but yeah, so he had to replace those shits. Hmm. Um, but definitely, I'm just trying to figure out. I mean, part of it, I think if I went out and bought three swords, because I'm assuming one sword is around a hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure it, it would be similar priced, so I think I might just get the custom made ones. Um, which I would I, say, which for three hundred, I think will even come with the mantle that I can put them you on. You could also wait for the anime expo. Mm, I don't know. I would prefer to like have it actually professionally made. Yeah, by a blacksmith, you know. That and I don't think it would be too difficult because there's, it's not like it's a crazy design and they're just katanas. Yeah. I think the only real difficult one would be the black sword. Probably. Because that's different material. Yeah. That's but like, everything else, it's just like, okay, it's going to be a, a custom handle and a custom, I forget the disc's name. It might cost more because it's custom, but I don't think like... I don't think it would be that much, much more. Because yeah. I know I, you know, looking into this when I was like fucking... 14 and shit i've seen a lot of katanas for only 60 mm, yeah. so even if it cost an extra hundred that would still be cheaper than buying three 100 dollars swords yeah because you're spelling in and then the weight. good thing is they'll be sharpened because it's not like i'm buying them off of e- uh, amazon where they have to be dull dull yeah and then yeah. You have to sharpen them yourself, yeah yeah which i'm like who the fuck's carrying around a sword yeah, sharpener sharp, and like, shit what which the fuck? <laughs> uh, fun fact when I was 16, I got my first job, and it was a job at school. Um, okay. L.A. came up with this very retarded program of <laughs> breakfast and classroom. Um, oh, isn't that where you deliver food to yeah, the classroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is so fucking retarded. They would interrupt It was, everything. especially just because the way that our school did it um, was very fucking stupid in specific but so i got a job in my senior year uh delivering breakfasts to the elementary mostly the kindergarten and stuff um, and so 
Yeah, no, for real. So that's what we would do. We would just deliver them. Uh, we would just leave them in front of the doors, really, making sure that we had the right classrooms and shit. And um, we got paid for that entire period. And so when I finally got paid, which that is a fucking story in itself, my first paycheck. But when I finally got paid, I finally had money for this, this one thing I wanted more than anything, more than any of the spy gear toys I've been eyeing since middle school, right? Zabasa's sword, his guillotine blade. Yeah. The executioner blade? Yeah. And I had been eyeballing it for a while. I was like, dude, my check is just enough. Um, and it, it wasn't as perfect as I wanted it in my head, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, but it was five feet tall. just okay. And just barely, like not... It wasn't skinny, skinny. It, it just wasn't as fat as I would have liked it. But it was still a very tall and very wide fucking sword. Because yeah. just the blade itself is five feet. That's not including the handle. Mm -hmm. um, so I was definitely going to like cop that shit. And I'm like looking into it. And then I... I these were the only two reasons why I do not own a Zabasa sword to this day five years later. Reason number one is I read... Because I was prepared. I was lifting weights like crazy so I can handle a 50-pound blade. Because I watched reviews on this shit, and they said, hey, I've been lifting weights for about two years. This definitely feels like 50 pounds because I can barely fucking do this with my one hand and shit. And so I was well, like, fuck yeah. You no, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's, the kid who was reviewing it and everything, he's like, okay, if I put it on one hand, yeah, yeah this definitely feels fucking 50. Yeah. Um, so I, I was working out and everything. First thing that stopped me was um, the fact that I hadn't known at that point that swords always get sold dull. So I had no possible way of sharpening them. And I was like, shit, maybe at some point I can eventually afford a sharpener, right? So mm -hmm. I'm still go for it. What finally stopped me from, from buying uh, the guillotine blade was the fact that I did not have a bank account. Oh, shit. That's so right. I could not purchase anything on the internet. And that sucked. That, that sucked. <laughs> be, I know nobody would think about that, really. Because it's in, in this day and age, you're either like, you're, it's in your mind that you're like, everybody has a bank account. Yeah. Or, which I think comes more naturally, you're just in the story. So you're not thinking about all those extra details like that shit. Um, but yeah, so, and that extra sucked because I was thinking, if for whatever reason shipping handling was so expensive that I couldn't afford the sword anymore, I could go and get those spy gear shit that I wanted to yeah. mess around with. And I can always like tinker with them, upgrade them if I like take the time to really learn that shit. Could not do that either because no bank account. And I, that was not the last time having no bank account fucked with me. I almost got no financial aid because I had no bank account. Really? Well, I almost had no financial aid. And, be, and so I get, to, I get to UC Santa Cruz, and I'm freaking the fuck out because nobody taught me shit because the college counselor had a really, really huge bias against me. This is proven. That's a story, too. Jesus. <laughs> She like we have this um. They're like how our, do you fuck up Eric's life. Our our homeroom has these sports tournaments that we do every single year. Uh, we have several, okay. but it it changes depending on who is organizing that year. Um, but for the two staples every year are the volleyball tournament and the biggest one is the basketball tournament that we would all do. So, I was always hyped for that shit. And there was one homeroom taught by a teacher who goes by the name of Maria Nakis. Very awesome lady. Um, she used to work for the NBA. Um, she used to, she, I believe, was a kinesiologist. Okay. I believe. Uh, I might be miss. She was either a kinesiologist or a businesswoman, but she was involved with the athletes. And so through her time working for the NBA, she gained enough experience to be able to coach athletes on a smaller scale. Okay. And so because of that... Uh, she always had a very, very formidable team 
not only because of her coaching abilities, but because at the beginning of every year when new students are coming in, she sits there and picks students that she finds out ahead of time have some sort of athleticism to them. Okay. <laughs> Which, background check. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking crazy. And so, like, one year she had a whole team of six foot Asian dudes who right. all were bodybuilders. It was fucking insane. Um, Dude, the basketball team is going to kick your ass. <laughs> but, but that was, that was um, like the very first year that we played. And thankfully, my fucking class didn't go up against them. How, but many, how many of them were, were there? There were five six foot bodybuilding oh, Asians. They were, that. and they all had hops. They weren't just tall. So I was going to say it's the seven swordsmen of the middle. Barely, right barely jumping. Barely getting off the ground, they don't even they don't put back the basketball. They lightly slap it and it goes in. Really? They slap it like a volleyball and it just falls back in. Jesus. But and so, this lady was. How much uh, time do we, have left? Uh, we got like eight, eight, nine minutes left. Okay. Uh, this lady was um, two time undefeated. Really? And in a row, in a row. And so everybody was very, very wanting to kick her fucking ass because we're all like, dude, we're seniors this year. If we, and there's not a whole lot of athletic people next year, and all the athletic people from the year after us are in her class. So if we don't beat her now, she'll fucking forever go undefeated. And we can't let that bitch have that shit. <laughs> and, that, and, and, and she, we really were motivated, me specifically. Because this bitch made t-shirts for her whole homeroom. Really? To brag how, how they had gone two years straight. So I spent from... And the basketball tournament is always second semester. I spent the whole fucking year from like the second week of school just training, training, training. I would ditch class like crazy. So... And I had like two to three free periods because of how many units or credits I already had done. And all the classes that I did have, I could easily get so far ahead that I don't need to show up for two to three days and my grade will be fine. Okay. So it got to the point where I just wasn't going to school anymore. I was only going to school to go to the basketball courts. Got to the point where all the security who worked for the school knew my face and were constantly checking the basketball courts for me. So I had a whole routine going on. But I'd get there before class at like seven in the morning. And I'd start training. I'd wipe my sweat down because there's that girl Patricia I told you about and I, I'm going to see her for my free period because I'm a teacher assistant for her English class and I'm trying to talk to her a <laughs> I can't come up smelling sweaty as fuck so yeah, I go I, mean, I can already see you going hey what are you willing to do for an A? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I clean up a little bit to go see Patricia and shit and um, or Spanish because we had block periods and everything and then after staying for like about 30, 40 minutes, I leave, I head back to the courts after changing into my sweaty clothes again. I only come back down for nutrition, and I take my food with me. I sneak around the security to go back up to the courts. I'm there even when the class is starting. Sometimes um, PE teachers from other academies will pull up, and if it was a PE teacher that I recognized, I'd be like, hey, you mind if I work out with your class for a little bit? And I'd go doing laps with them. And then she's, whatever exercise she's giving them, I'm doing with them. That was my only break from the basketball. <laughs> and then as soon as their class is over, I'm right back at it. Oh, okay. Uh, only coming down again for lunch. And then coming back up, just working out, working out, working out. Every, uh, there's a couple of other dudes coming up to the courts, also ditching class. And they're like, oh, shit. When the fuck did Eric get here? I was like, I've been here since seven, dog. Let's go. <laughs> so for seven straight hours, that's what I was doing, right? In comes, I'm not going to say her name, but in comes the, the college counselor, right? It's second semester. I've been working my ass off. I came up with like four new fucking moves, right? I came up for one for this one tall guy who's given me issues before. I came up with a brand new fucking pass that I was working on with my teammates for a, a cool couple of weeks. Hello. So I came up with the new pass and everything. I, um, I, I had all this shit in my head for the big threats for myself. And um, we, everybody submits the rosters and 
I come in and I'm like, yo, how come we're not, I thought we were supposed to be practicing today to my homeroom. Mm -hmm. And they're like, didn't they tell you? I was like, what's going on? Well, remember when we had a substitute teacher? I'm like, yeah. The college counselor stormed into the room, said, none of you guys are playing this year. You're all going to be referees and left before we got to say anything. So we're not on the roster. And I was tripping the fuck out. I couldn't believe it. So I log into like our student portal and the roster's posted and our homeroom was left out. Mm. And so I raised hell like crazy and they finally fucking gave in. And they're like, okay, you know, submit your roster today and then you can play. It was bullshit, but I got enough people to fucking say yeah. And then, you know, we submitted our shit. Yeah. Submitted our shit. Um, and so that... Later that night, and I'm texting my boy who started ditching with me um, to help me practice and everything. I started, I started, I texted my boy that night, and he's like, dude, it's up. And he sends me a screenshot of the updated roster. First round, we're against Miss Nakis. And Ooh. I said, this is what I was training for. <laughs> I had a game plan in my head already. And what was crazier about Miss Nakis' class is there, or the star player of her team that year was the star player of the whole school's basketball team. Oh, shit. And I'm like, I want that motherfucker. Because I've played a couple of exhibition rounds with him. I know I can lock him the fuck up. I don't know for how long, because the knee yeah. condition, so my legs will hurt after about 12 minutes of running. And because of the asthma, too. Mm -hmm. But I will hound his ass. And if he's not hitting his threes, we're going to be fine. The day comes, right? I show up to school. I had some, some new Nikes some new Air Maxes that I haven't been using. Because whenever I, I work out, my f shoes fall apart within a month to the point where the soles come off. Oof. So I had those Air Maxes tucked away until this day comes. And I dress up in a black jumpsuit, Sasuke Uchiha style, <laughs> with the logo stitched on the back. I, I stitched it myself, did the cloth myself. And I come up with some knee pads because I love diving for the ball. And this year we were playing on the black tops. Oof. And I've never had a problem with that before. But I'm like, I can't hurt myself diving for the ball. They're going to need me for round two. <laughs> and I show up. I'm excited as fuck. And my boy's looking for me. And he's like, do, 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 do. I need to talk to you. And I was like, what's going on, bro? Don't kill my vibe. And he's like, they updated the roster. I was like. What does it say? Your team's not on the roster anymore. <whistles> Again. And on cue, that bitch was walking past us. I'm like, miss, I need to talk to you. Ducks her head down, starts walking faster. And my boy runs after her. And he starts haggling her. And she gave no fucking reason. She bullshitted that shit. She got up at like 6, 7 in the morning. Because he gets up at 6 in the morning. And that's when he checked. She got up at 6 in the morning just to remove our team from the fucking list. Just to fuck with us. And worst of all, she didn't even replace anybody for that round. So they just automatically went to the second round. Wow. I had all these fucking high hopes and I had that whole year that I was working on. And she just fucking took it from us because she hated me that much. I never went to prom. I never went to a bonfire. I never went to grad night or any other senior high school event because she made sure that I never had a field trip slip. She would always come when she knew that I wasn't in class. So I never knew about anything. So I missed every possible event I could have ever gone to all senior year. Damn. Yeah, she had a vendetta against you. Yep. But we are out of time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to stick around for future videos on the Homeboys channel as well as the individual channels in the description below. You want to say anything? I have cancer. Goodbye. <laughs>